Hello everyone and welcome back. Today the exit signs installed around here are getting a little tired and same with the emergency lighting fixtures. All incandescent right now, all powered by sealed lead acid batteries. So I'm gonna be replacing them with something fresher. So I have these right here. This is the dual light ELSS system. Um, not sponsored by the way. These are basically a little different from standard units. It's a central battery pack that runs a bunch of remote units. So unlike these where just 120 volts runs in here, um, and powers each one separately. None of these have batteries. The battery is contained in one box, and then these are just extensions. You can kind of think of it like a fire alarm system where there's just a panel and then a bunch of field devices. So let's do it. So I'm gonna put the central unit somewhere in this room. Um, this emergency lighting circuit, all of the ones down here are fed from this receptacle and then up here. I have this little switch that runs them so I can turn them on and off as I need. But um, in this case, I don't think I'm gonna need that because the central unit has a switch in it so i'm probably gonna what i'm gonna do that was a sentence but i'm gonna remove this switch here and there's 120 volts coming in and then there's a line out to all the units and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put the battery box right here and then instead of using this cable which goes out as a 120 volt feeder i'm just gonna use this as a remote head lead so all of these units instead of getting 120 volts at them they're gonna get uh, i think 12 volts or whatever the power coming out of this is so yeah before I do that though, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all of these units because obviously as soon as I turn off the power, they're gonna start draining the batteries. So I'm gonna save the batteries. As you can see, I just removed all of the units from the ceiling. I left the boxes and wiring in place and these wires are gonna be repurposed. All the self-contained units on the circuit are now down. The other emergency lighting circuit is going to remain self-contained because I'm not gonna be able to run wire all the way from the battery box to the other side of the basement. But let's install the battery box now. So what I'm gonna do is probably put a scrap piece of wood somewhere like right here and then mount the uh, unit onto this and then just run wire from this box up to here. Um, sounds like that would make more sense. Obviously gonna have to punch out the center hole. I don't even feel like knocking it out with a hammer. So I'm just gonna use this step bit and make the hole. So now I've put this plate up, as you can see, just send a couple screws into this thing and uh, hold it tight. Hold it where I want it, make sure it's fairly level and then just mark out the center. Honestly, I'm just gonna use this metal step bit, even though you're probably not supposed to do it with this, so. We go that kind of works so now we can go ahead and match the hole that we just drilled with the unit and then we can screw it in so now i'm going to remove these switch screws i think i was a freshman in high school when i did this wiring back in the day which actually wasn't that long ago but a lot has changed since then i really don't understand why everyone or a lot of people hate on wagos or lever nuts. I think it comes from a lack of education, honestly. Um, a lot of people talk about them. They're like, yeah, no, those things are going to fail in like two years. The whole place is going to burn down. And then they show me a picture and it's like not a Wago at all. It's like one of those push connectors. Those are completely different. By Wago, we're talking about like these nice little lever nut things. I mean, Wago does make push connectors, but um, usually I think when people talk about Wagos, they're kind of talking about like the Kleenex of tissues, the Wagos of uh, like lever connectors, which are really, really good connectors. I mean, especially when you change things out frequently or you're planning to make changes to a circuit, you saw how it was kind of annoying. Well, you didn't see because I wasn't filming, but to untwist and then straighten out the wires. With Wagos, it's so much easier to customize circuits. So I definitely would use Wagos in the future, especially for a project like this. Splicing a piece of Romex that's gonna run to the inverter we go we can tuck that back into the box went ahead and covered the junction with a blank plate here's the inside it looks like a mess as you can see so romex comes in probably should have a bushing but it's plastic i think it'll be fine then i have this so this is going to go out to the exit signs because i have to make a separate run for the exit fixtures and then this goes to all the emergency fixtures so we'll just put those in these connectors so there we go all of our bus wiring is done so now all we have to do is put in a battery and then start installing our field devices. But obviously I do have to run these wires to the exit signs. Slide this clamp over the battery to hold it in. Well, that exit sign cable. And there it is. You can see we have the 120 cable and then we also have, or no, this isn't the 120 cable, but it was the 120 cable. Now it's feeding emergency lights. And then here's the exit sign cable because that is a different circuit. 
gonna start by installing an exit sign where we just ran our wire. So you pop off the faceplate here, you get a canopy, which is nice. And that's what we're gonna use to mount this device to the ceiling. So first you have to fix this plate to the ceiling, which you also feed the wire through because I'm wiring inside of the sign. Gotta put this little piece into the canopy, which is what grips the sign. Screw the canopy to that plate. Go ahead and snap the sign into the bracket. To snap on the faceplate, you have a completed exit sign. Just installed this unit right here in the utility room. This is really, really bright. It has the same lamp heads as the AVHC series. So it's really, really nice. Let me just adjust these lamps here. There you go. Just put this remote head in the basement area. I used this outdoor remote head in the bathroom. I couldn't really find a suitable place for it. So I figured that since this is kind of a wet location, this would be good. Now, before I install my emergency fixture here, I'm actually gonna replace this access panel. I just made this new one here. I uh, got a piece of plywood. I even routered the edges there. I painted it. It doesn't look like the paint's all that good, but once it's up there, I think it'll be good. So I'm just gonna put this up. There we go. I got this black housing indoor remote head installed. So now that everything's assembled, let's go ahead and test it. See here, this is really, really bright over here. This emergency light fixture is also attached to this central unit. If you go into the bathroom, you can see this outdoor remote head is working great. And here, it's really, really nice. Even though these lamps technically point down, they're very omnidirectional. I'll try and show it by turning off the light in here. They really, really aim down and like in all directions. Like they're really bright if you stare into them from this position, which is kind of cool. Go ahead and turn these units off by pushing the button again. Should click. And there it goes. For the time being, I've just put up this LED sign. And then in the other room, I'm using the red LED sign. The exit bus fuse in the inverter unit popped. So I'm just running this off of a 12 volt transformer right now. But other than that, these units are really, really nice. I'm very happy with how they look. And yeah, thank you for watching. Please do like, comment, and subscribe. Farewell.